All right, let's talk about the Daniel fast. Do you have, um, Brother Dave got everybody one of the uh, write-ups I did for you tonight. So go to, if you'd like to turn there, Daniel, or here on your page, I've got about half of the scriptures we'll look at, I've got written out for you. And then the other ones are from Daniel 10, later in the chapter. Okay, looking at the Daniel fast. Two references to fasting in the book of Daniel. One is Daniel chapter 1. And you know the story. The boys are in captivity. They are not in Babylon on vacation. They're not on spring break. They have been taken there as prisoners of war. They're going to be educated. They're going to be taught the language of the Babylonians. And in learning that language, they're also going to learn all the customs. There's a list there in chapter 1 of all the things they're going to learn. And even though they're prisoners of war, they have already developed a reputation back in Israel that preceded them. These guys are young. You would probably not be wrong to think of them as 17 years old, give or take. And as you think of that, they are considered to be, even in the captivity, potential leaders. However they discerned that as the Babylonians, I don't know. But they found out that these are some of the guys that we need. And we're going to basically convert them to Babylonian ways, Babylonian life. And then they are going to help us rule this growing kingdom. Because Babylon, like many of those empires of those days, they um, would occupy the land that they had taken. And they would put their people there and bring some of those. And what they were doing is creating a global government. And they felt the best way to do that was to bring every culture to theirs, indoctrinate them with Babylonian culture, and then send them back. Well, part of the deal was you will eat the king's food and drink the king's wine. And the boys say, Daniel and his friends say, no. And here's, here's the verse we're going to pull out. Please test us for 10 days on a diet of vegetables and water, Daniel said. At the end of the 10 days, see how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's food. Then make your decision in light of what you see. And if you read the whole context, this is where in the King James it uses the word pulse, part of what they're eating. The New Living says vegetables. We're just going to have vegetables and water. And pulse is, I think, just like that. I mean, we don't know exactly, but a V8. You know, it's, it's vegetables, uh, probably not a lot of cooking, but I don't think it necessarily means no cooking. But it's in contrast to the king's rich food. All right? Now, that's what they do, and, and I've got this for you there later on the paper, in obedience to God. This isn't a declared fast. This is a hey, no, we're not eating that because much of what your king feeds the people is against our dietary laws. We're not allowed to have shrimp. We're not allowed to have lobster. We're not allowed to have, you know, there's all these delicacies. And the, the boys are saying, nope, 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 no way. We are not going to violate our obedience to God. And if you'll let us obey God, he'll prove that his way is the best way. But I don't, you know, the, the commander of the troops comes to him and says, Daniel, listen, you'll cost me my life. I can't do this. Daniel says, just give us a chance. We're not asking you to get in trouble, but let us live our dietary laws while we're learning all this stuff. So I want you to understand that even though many people take this as a fast, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible is showing you and I that they are obeying the, the, the Lord as opposed to the king. And they're drawing this line of obedience. Okay, Even Dr. Axe on his website uses this verse to talk a little bit about the kind of the, the um, menu for fasting in the Daniel fast. Where we get the menu for the Daniel fast is in chapter 10, verses 2 and 3. When this vision came to me, I, Daniel, had been in mourning for three whole weeks. M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. For 21 days, three whole weeks. All that time, I had eaten no rich food. No meat or wine crossed my lips, and I used no fragrant lotions until those three weeks had passed. And you and I would add, and you did not live where the temperature is 38 below zero, <laughs> and the wind blows 47 miles an hour and cuts your skin off. So you can say, I'm not going to use any lotions, 
as he, he would say in Nacho Libre. But you, uh, you and I understand that we might need to use some lotions, okay? Uh, just a reference there between us. First, we notice that these two events are not the same, not in purpose nor in procedure. And so our focus in this time together is really just on that chapter 10. This is where the Daniel fast is taken from. The length that Daniel went was 21 days. Now, we don't know how long he intended to go. But on this particular day, the message came. On this particular day, breakthrough took place. On this day, he heard from heaven. It's our assumption that this particular fast ended. But it doesn't say that Daniel said, well, I'm going to fast 21 days and your God's going to show up or too bad on him. Right? That's, that's not. See, we have to be careful that we don't read our biases into the text. Daniel says, when the vision came, it's, it's so funny. What a coincidence. But I had just finished three weeks of fasting. Now, I'm not telling you he finished his fast. I'm just telling you he had been counting the days. And he said, I had just crossed the 21-day mark. So I say that to tell you, 21 days is not necessarily a special number. You can do 7, 14, 10, 19. And we're going to take a look at what is special about this, what we're trying to do. Anytime we're fasting, we want to be so careful because our flesh has a tendency to be involved in reward and punishment. Our flesh has a tendency to gravitate towards conditional love. God's kind of love is what? Unconditional. That's right. God's love is always unconditional. Our nature is to move us towards conditional love. Always, always, always. And part of what fasting is about is to move us away from that which we cling to, that which we gravitate to, towards so easily. And move us over to where we're in this relationship with God that isn't about rules and, well, I, I, can't, I, I can't eat this, um, this cucumber because Billy Bob isn't eating a cucumber. Or I can't eat a cucumber because I saw him. I wasn't going to, but I saw See, we don't want to do that. That's, that's not the purpose of fasting. Fasting is not for me to compare myself to somebody else. Fasting is not for me to say to God, well, there's three days or there's seven days. What are you going to do? Fasting is really about me putting myself in a place where God can get my attention more readily, that he can speak to me more quickly. Let me reverse that and give you the right kind of basis. It's so that I can hear him more readily, so that he can speak to me and I can listen. Amen? Okay. So first we notice that these two events are not the same. So we're going to more or less ignore for our purposes of talking about the Daniel fast, we're going to ignore Daniel chapter 1 verse 13 and we're going to talk about this in chapter 10. So if you have your Bible, I didn't write these ones out for you, but in Daniel chapter 10 we're going to look at verses 10 through uh, 14, I think I put there for you. And this is um, where we get what it is that he's going after. Daniel chapter 10, verse 10, Just then a hand touched me and lifted me, still trembling, to my hands and knees. <laughs> well, Daniel, how was it to encounter the living God? Uh, well, I, you know, I'm kind of laying on the ground shaking like a dog. And even when he lifted me up, I made it to my hands and knees. And the man said to me, Daniel, you are very precious to God. So listen carefully to what I have to say to you. How many of you think Daniel, the Lord had Daniel's undivided attention? Huh? Listen very carefully. Stand up, for I've been sent to you. When he said this to me, I stood up, still trembling. Then he said, don't be afraid, Daniel, since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. I've come and answered your prayer, but for 21 days... The spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me. And I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now I'm here to explain what will happen to your people in the future. 
for this vision concerns a time yet to come. Well, that's a pretty powerful encounter with God, isn't it? Huh? That's kind of, that's not earth shaking, that's person shaking, that's soul shaking power. And this encounter with Daniel and heaven is brought about because Daniel begins to pray. He purposes in his heart to pray. He says, I've got to have an answer. Something is happening. I, I sense that there's all kinds of, of, of turmoil in this nation that I'm in, in our culture. In verse uh, 13, or 12, don't be afraid, Daniel, since the first day you began to pray for understanding. Something is confusing Daniel. Something is perplexing him and overwhelming him. And so when he sets about to pray, he also intentionally begins a kind of a fast. Now this is a fast that's different for at least Sister Pam and I, very different. Uh, we've never done a fast that is food, but a very limited menu. When we've fasted, it's always just been no food. Um, we don't, a couple of times I've gone like two days without water. I don't think I've ever made it three. That's, that's really tough for somebody like me that has high metabolism. Um, and it's not really good for you medically, at least they say. And we've done a few seven day fasts, but uh, for the most part, three, no food, and just hit it. In that kind of a fast, do you know what happens? You get hungry the whole time. Hmm? Yeah, we, we've been comparing notes, and you know, we're three days into this thing. And uh, notice I'm not, not too enthusiastic about this fast, but we're going to do it. Um, but we, we came away from the first two days saying, this is crazy. So we're going to talk tonight a little bit for uh, just a few minutes about the different emotions that are involved. I want you to understand it, it is a fast, but it's a different kind. And the intent is different. The purpose and, and what you're going to get out of it is different. But we see that Daniel was doing this fast because he, he needed understanding, okay? So there on your paper, his purpose, to draw closer to the Lord, to be a ready recipient of dreams and visions. Literally, I'm quoting from it, because the, the, the Lord says to him, don't be afraid, since the first day you began to what? Pray for understanding. God encourages us to pray for understanding, doesn't he? What does James say? James says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. But sometimes you've got to ask with some intentional planning. You've got to ask with some uh, works in your asking. You know, you got to knock hard on that door. And this fast is about that. Daniel says, something's wrong. I don't know what it is. God hasn't shown me. Now listen, he's a guy who moves in the realm of visions and dreams, right? That's just his thing. He's comfortable with it. God gives it to him. But something's troubling him. He knows there's something happening in the unseen world, but he can't get it. He doesn't have the vision of it yet. He doesn't have the dream, the revelation. And so when we read about him in the the Bible says, from the moment you began to seek understanding. But the understanding that he was seeking came with, his seeking came with a fast. Now, one of the things that I think is helpful in this kind of fast, he had a lot of work to do. This guy was very responsible in the kingdom. By this time in chapter 10, he is a major player in this kingdom. And, you know, the Babylonians have been overthrown and the other guys are in there. But he's still, a, he, he's basically uh, an ambassador or secretary of state. And so he's on the move. He's always... And sometimes it's hard to do a seven-day fast, an absolute fast, and still be able to work and give your full attention. This is the kind of fast in which you can participate and still go about daily life. He wanted to be safeguarded in his daily life and from the events to come. You can find that in the other text. He also wanted to live on a diet that demonstrated humility while having the energy to work. Because that's the second thing the Lord says to him. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before God. 
That you other fill in the blank. To humble yourself before God. We've talked about that. That fasting, that, that when the Old Testament, and especially in the King James, when the Old Testament uses that phrase, humble yourself, it's often talking about fasting. But aren't you glad Daniel's in the Bible? Aren't you glad this text is there? You and I would only know of one kind of fasting, and that's no food. And to be honest with you, when you are doing that kind of a fast, it's difficult to keep up your daily routine. In that first day, you can get headaches. Uh, Pam and I both had a headache the first day on this. I, I rarely get headaches when I'm fasting all food, but I guess that I just was very, very, very entangled with sugar. That's all I can figure. Um, because it was a real tough headache. Now, I always say, hey, just you know, take an aspirin and keep going or an ibuprofen and still continue the fast, but however you want to focus on it. Okay, the Daniel fast is much different than a total fast, and that's one without any food. On a total fast, the spiritual goal is to identify and then crucify your appetite, right? Or appetites. While on a Daniel fast... We are seeking to orient our tastes exclusively towards the Lord Jesus Christ. What do I mean? On a total fast, you will always struggle with hunger and a bunch of other things. On a Daniel fast, you will always struggle with satisfaction and other things. We went to dinner tonight at a restaurant. We went to Ruby Tuesday. We had the salad bar. Well, it's not really a salad bar. You go over and you point, and they put it on your plate for you. It's really discouraging to go to a salad bar like that. Because then you're thinking, like, it's all you can eat, right? Now, who, who other than me feels anything but awkward of going up there a second time, right? And the guy's kind of looking at you like, really? Like, hey, whoa, we're fasting here. We were, almost had a billboard going, you know, sign. We're fasting. We're fasting. So we got a salad and a baked potato. The baked potato, I had one baked potato for lunch yesterday. It's terrific, but it needed butter. She would tell you it needed sour cream. We'd both say it needed bacon chips, but you get none of that, dude. You, you get the potato, though. Here's the funny thing. You get to be full but never satisfied. That's exactly what this fast is supposed to do. You're always, you, you can eat as much as you want, as often as you want but you're never going to be satisfied. There's a a phrase in the King James that I love, and you will, when I mention it, you'll know it. And Jesus is telling the story in Luke, um, I think it's 16, of the rich man and Lazarus. Are you with me? The rich man and Lazarus, right? Everybody remember that parable that Jesus talks about? And even though most Bible scholars say, well, this was one of the parables that he taught, I'm convinced it's actual people. I don't think Jesus ever told a story. Now, he didn't name the folks, but I don't think he ever, well, he names Lazarus, but he doesn't name the rich man. But I think the rich man's right there close by. And uh, the parable, the story is that the Lazarus, was before they both died, Lazarus was a poor beggar. And the rich man, the King James says, he fared sumptuously every day. You remember that phrase? He fared sumptuously. I knew it. I, I couldn't even remember where it was at, but I did my little search on my app, and boom, there it was. It, that's the King James phrase. The New Living says he lived in luxury every day. But that fared sumptuously has a lot more connotation about the rich foods that he had every day. Now, gang, i got to tell you something. If any country needs to participate in a Daniel fast regularly, it's Americans. I've been in other countries, at least 10 other countries in ministry, and we fare sumptuously every day. Do you know what I did at this salad bar? I said, the the little tomatoes, I said, ooh, they're not even red. And then the pepper rings, they were almost like white. I could see right there. I'm complaining about the salad bar. I'm like, well, and she says, winter, I don't care. Come on, this should be bright cherry red. It's called a cherry tomato. Because we fare sumptuously. Um, Years and years ago, we were pastoring in West Virginia. And our Christian radio station there in the region, a pretty big radio station, very successful. Somehow they had contact with Cuba. 
And in those days, the 1990s, Cuba was still not very open to the U.S., but through a series of events, miraculously, the general superintendent of the Assemblies of God in Cuba, small organization, a lot of persecution, but he and his wife were able to get to America. And the first place they came was that radio station hosted them. And they called me before they got into town and asked if I would host them on a Sunday, and we did. And they were telling me the... uh, the superintendent's wife only spoke Spanish. But the translator and the radio station people that came to our church were telling me the story. They'd come into town a couple of days before. And they'd taken them either to Walmart or to the, um, I think the grocery store, Kroger. But it might have been Walmart. I don't know if Walmart had groceries back then. But they had to take him and her out. They got in there and got overwhelmed and couldn't stop crying. And had to take them out of the store. Because they were they didn't have words to explain they had never seen that much food and they had never seen it available to everybody. They, they told the host that your shelves, how are your shelves full of food? And, and it just overwhelmed them. They were an older couple, probably in their 60s or maybe even 70s, I don't remember. But it was, you could just tell that this had been a lifetime of suffering for them. And that, that stuck with me that we fare sumptuously. Now, we know it in the U.S., but we don't know it to the point that we're so appreciative of it that we say to God every day, thank you for allowing us to fare sumptuously. When we're on a Daniel fast, that's what we're focused on. When you're on an absolute fast or a total fast, absolute means no food or water. Total means no food. All right. When you're on a total fast, your focus really is on identifying with people that have nothing. When you're on a Daniel fast, you're identifying with the people that have something, but it's the same. They, they have no choice, no variety. Life is, is a, a persecution of monotony. We are so fortunate. We, know, we say this in America, but I don't know that we fully grasp it. On the Daniel fast, we do. I, I looked down at my dog today, and he's eating the same dog food I've been putting in his dish for 10 years. And I thought, boy, I got you. I know exactly how you're feeling. This is what day is this? <laughs> Three. <laughs> and I just, I am stunned at how this feels because I've got raisins. I got a big thing of raisins. I got a big thing of peanuts. I love raisins, love peanuts, and I'm eating them. And I'm, always, I'm never hungry, but I'm like, oh, I'm just not satisfied. And we still have a dish of candy and chocolate right there on the table. And I'm like, I don't even crave chocolate like I do now, but. <laughs> uh, you have a comment or a question? If you do, you're, you're free to jump in, okay? Or we'll try and uh, get out of here in the next 10 minutes or so. Any kind of fast that you do after seven days that you do, does it give you a clarity? Like after you get over the initial fasting, yes. right. do you sleep better? Is your prayer time, do you just feel more relaxed? Yes. Right. Sister Pam, for those of you in, in, uh, listening, um, once you get into a fast, the goal is, is to get to that point where you know your flesh is now settled or crucified or whatever it might be. But you, this is when you begin to feel or sense or discern. You can use whatever word you want. But when you begin to discern that your spirit is now getting more opportunity, in control, um, connecting you to the Lord better... You, Clarity, yeah, and, and absolutely, it was happening to me this afternoon, uh, two, three, two or three o'clock, I just felt like, wow, I didn't have a very good time in prayer this morning, it, it wasn't, I felt fine physically, but um, it just wasn't happening, nothing spectacular, but I think maybe I started to cross over that line a little bit in the afternoon, I wasn't doing anything, wasn't even praying, but I just started feeling like the Lord was nudging me about some things, that's the goal in fasting, to understand And to humble ourselves. And in that understanding, Daniel is looking for dreams and visions. He needs discernment on what he's facing and what he sees there. Okay? Um, Mark that or write that down. Um, Circle it there on your notes. On a total fast, you struggle with hunger. On a Daniel fast, you struggle with satisfaction. And those are not the same. And so this one is intended to highlight a different part of how God blesses us, to give us a different appreciation for what we have and for an identi- identification with those that don't have it. 
I'm fasting right now because I've got friends in Pakistan that uh, while they, they're blessed, they minister to people that have nothing. I've got friends in Tanzania. I've got friends in Nicaragua all the same way, okay? Daniel's procedure while fasting. This is verse, uh, chapter 10, verses 2 and 3, and I've got those written out for you up there. He was emotionally broken. The word that the Bible uses is mourning. He was in deep mourning. Emotionally uh, soul, broken soul. I don't know if you and I can say that our spirit's mourning. Maybe so, but he, he just knew that he wasn't at the point. I'm not talking about his spiritual journey as far as are you saved or are you close to God. He just knew he needed something more situationally, and that grieved him. He was going to eat no rich food. No meat and no wine. Um, on this Dr. Axe's website, he steers us away from fruit juice. Um, I agree that you can't have any juice that has sugar in it or anything added. But if you're drinking grape juice or cranberry juice, that's, you know, I, if I'm eating cranberries, I don't see any difference between that and drinking the cranberry juice. But if you don't want to do juice, that's fine. He recommends water. Um, uh, coconut water and something else, almond, almond milk or almond juice or whatever you call it. Yeah, so if you want to figure that out yourself, that's fine. But again, this isn't about legalism. And if you see somebody drinking one of the beverages that you don't think you should be drinking, you, you don't have to correct them and you don't have to quit doing it the way you're doing it. All right, this isn't really about you. you, you the guidelines are, are here. But, you know, if you're bumping around, so listen, if I inadvertently pick up a, a piece of candy and, and don't even realize, in two or three days I can even forget I'm fasting and just do it out of habit. I could pop in a lifesaver or something. I'm not going to say, well, my fast is ruined, I have to quit. Okay, you know, it's, listen, God's, God looks at the heart. Not the body or the brain. God looks at the heart, our intentions. And the intention here is not for me to earn points with God. The intention is for me to be submitted and surrendered so that God can have more of me. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, no rich food. So we, we kick out sugar, obviously, and cream and, and all dairy. And uh, that takes out butter and cheese. We kick out all protein, meats, eggs, the whole shebang. And so you have to find protein other places. And that's where on his list he's got lots of good stuff there, beans and um, peanuts and, and whatever, almonds. Okay? Now, when you look at his list, he, he directs you more towards the vegetables. He wants you to limit your fruit intake. Gang, I don't care. In chapter 1, Daniel says, I'm only going to eat vegetables. That's not what he says in chapter 10. All right? He's avoiding anything that pertains to celebration. He avoids anything that pertains to richness and sweetness and ooey-gooey. All right? That's what he says, God, I don't have time for any of that, and I know that's just weighing me down. One of the things that we've found uh, interesting in this is that you're really eating about as healthy as you can eat. You know? Now, he wants all organic stuff. That's not, as all, it's not always as easy to find um, for us as it might be for others. I, I don't know, and I think it's a lot more expensive. We went to the market the other day, and organic tends to be more expensive. Um, in Nicaragua, they'll tell you that all of the organic coffee is the exact same as the non-organic coffee. <laughs> they just, they'll, they'll take out and show you that most of the poor farmers can't afford to get the certification, but they do the exact same thing and they don't use the pesticides and all that. All right, so no rich food, no meat, no wine. Also, he said no, no sweet lotions, no fragrances. Um, good for him. I'm not doing that, all right? My, if I don't put lotion on my face, I'll come in here Sunday and you'll just see red from top to bottom. Um, I, I think when you're fasting, Jesus said, um, I think Jesus said to anoint yourself, didn't he? Yeah, comb your hair and anoint yourself. Because again, what the, they're not contradictory, but what, what Daniel's saying is, 
I'm, I'm getting myself in a place with God. What Jesus is saying is, don't do this so that other people can see that you're doing it. Those two are in harmony. Say it again. Yeah, don't, there you go, Sister Jane, thank you. Don't, you know, we're not supposed to be saying, I'm a martyr, look how I'm suffering. All right, we don't want this to be religious. We don't want it to be a burden. We want to be able to enjoy the fast. And by that I mean enjoy having our spirit in control or at least having freedom in our spirit. All right, excellent. Yes, on a Daniel fast, you can prepare meals, eat at any time, and be full. But you can also spend time meditating on the presence of the Lord and future events. I'll tell you, again, I, I don't know why we haven't, well, yes, I do. Excuse me, for Sister Pam and I, we haven't done these before. Just because it doesn't, um, I, I hadn't seen this part of it. And I never wanted to be on a fast where I was having to spend all my time figuring out what I can and cannot eat. I'd rather just do the, do the um, I don't like math. You know, and just eliminate all that and just say we're not eating for the next couple of days. But I'm seeing things about this fast that I hadn't seen before. And I think there's probably some good material out there. I haven't looked into it very much other than his website, Dr. Axe, and that's D-R-A-X-E dot com, if you want to go there. And he's got some great spiritual takeaways on there. He's also got good recipes. So if you haven't done this yet, if you haven't tried it or you, you thought this is crazy or I shouldn't, I'm going to encourage you again. If you say, well, pastor, I don't don't know if I can do 21 days or you guys already started and I can't catch up. Number one, I don't want you to think about 21 days to start. If you've not fasted before, that's a long, long time. So I would prefer on a Daniel fast that you focus on trying to do seven. That's a really good number. It's not going to it's not going to hurt you in any form or fashion. Um, and, and let me encourage you to th- uh, think about the uh, medically, um, you're going to, your body's going to change. Any fast that you go on affects your body. It changes your body. So if you go cold turkey, which is what you will do to start fasting, and you cut out cold turkey, sugar, caffeine, cream and dairy and all meat it's going to send your body into shock all right and that's what you've got to work through that so seven days will allow you to get to that place physically where your body has adapted to the change and then you can see if it makes a difference in your sleep if it makes a difference in your anxiety levels and all of that never never equate or confuse fasting with dieting ever Don't step on the scale before you start a fast. Don't step on a scale during a fast. Don't step on a scale after a fast. I don't want to hear it. It has nothing to do with losing weight. If you let even a 1% thought get in your brain, Satan will blow it into 100%. And it will all be about, am I losing weight? You are not going to lose weight on a fast. You might weigh less at different times, but you are not going to lose weight. Hello. And the reason I'm emphasizing that is because these are not the same thing. Now, if you don't make that your focus and you don't care anything about it, you're going to get in fasting, both in a a total fast and a Daniel fast, you're going to get your body in a healthier place. But until that becomes a part of your lifestyle, you're not... I don't diet. I've never dieted. Well, Pastor, that's easy for you to say because you're thin. But listen, I've lost weight. And I do that, people will tell you, and any of us who wrestled in school, you learn a lot about losing weight. You learn about how to do it the wrong way, and that's how you do it most of the time, the wrong way. I lost tons of weight the wrong way. I could drop 30 pounds in about five days the wrong way. All right? So, and my dad, (laughs) who was a, uh, a pro- almost professional athlete. He, um, uh, he can tell you, he could write books about losing weight the wrong way. That's not your goal. Don't get into that. That's a, that's a devil's trap. But if you focus on just getting your spirit free and alive and bringing your body under the dominion 
of your spirit, bringing your body in, not in control, but having your body submitted, then you can begin to figure out what's healthy for you. I, I don't know what your ideal weight is. I can tell you this, that when my blood pressure was high a couple of years ago and um, uh, a couple other things, I said, oh, something's, something's not right here. i got to change. It took me more than a year of walking every day before. And, and you know what happened the first six months I walked? I gained weight, my blood pressure went higher. I said to the doctor, well, this doesn't make any sense. Yes, it does. You're eating more. Oh, yeah. Funny how that happens. So when we begin to fast, we're focused on the Lord, not our body. Don't, don't get caught in that trap. And you'll, you'll, you'll just get discouraged if you're in that trap, okay? Um, fasting is not dieting. And you really, as a believer, I don't think you need to diet. You just need to come back in to God's presence and say, I need a vision. I need discernment. For any of you that feel for your, maybe it's your blood pressure or your sugar or your weight or whatever it is, all of that, God has an answer for you, but you'll find the answer. You won't find the weight loss. You'll find the answer for you personally as you move into this place. That's what Daniel was saying. I, I, there's something going on internationally, and I'm an international person. I've got to know what this is. For you, it might be there's something going on medically, and I've got to find out what it is. There's something going on in my relationship, in my business, in my finances. I need to find out what it is. Bingo. Now, now God says, come on, come on, let's go on a journey here. Try seven days. For those of you who still want to jump on and, and you haven't started yet, no caffeine. Um, I don't. We're not doing even decaf coffee, which is really tough. <laughs> no Pepsi, um, nothing like that. And, and I don't think you, you should stay away from diet sodas and all that. Seltzer water, I think the flavored seltzer waters, but nothing with aspartame or sucralose or any of that in it, okay, because that's really going to mess your body up. So... Even if you haven't started yet and you want to try, jump in. Say, this Sunday is it, and on Monday I'm going to fast until next Sunday, and I'm going to do it on a Daniel fast. And then prepare your home. You might need to put some stuff away or throw some stuff in the trash. We got rid of a bunch of stuff. Should have got rid of a bunch more. <laughs> but We're pretty good at knowing how to deal with that. Okay. Then if you get on it and you love it, you can still go 21 days. It'll just be a few days after us, that's all. There's no stopping you, all right? But you can't do 21 until you do one. Right? Okay, question. Question or comment? Daniel Fast. Yeah. What? Yeah, again, let's, let's go back to that text in, in verse 2. When this vision came to me, I, Daniel, had been in mourning for three whole weeks. All that time I had eaten no rich food. But then we go down to verse 12. Don't be afraid, Daniel, since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. We don't know what his destination was time wise and you may hear from God on day 17 day 12 I don't know but you're as sister Pam asked what should your goal be for understanding it really should be about whatever you're facing God I'm fasting because I need breakthrough I need a miracle answer from heaven number one number two I'm not worthy of that I'm really not God if you do anything for me I'm, I'm undeserving, and I'll never be able to pay it back. And I want you to understand that I'm serious about humility. There is no other way that I know of, biblically or realistically, to demonstrate humility to God but fasting. It just does. I, I don't know why, but it's just a message that goes straight to heaven that says, hey, this guy's a serious. You can fast air, but, but don't do it for more than like three minutes, okay, because you're dead then. So the only thing that you can really give up that you have to have to live it can't be air, it can't be water for more than three days unless it's a miraculous provision. Food. 
Food is the only other thing that you can say, I can't live without this for very long, but I can live long enough to show you that I want you more than it. That's fasting. All right? So I hope you enjoy some time on the Daniel Fast. Again, if you haven't started yet, it's no big deal at all. Jump on. Well, Pastor, I only wanted to do it with you. Well, we're going to be on it for the next couple of weeks. And, and before you ever set a goal of 21 days, if you've never fasted before, set a goal of seven. If you don't make it, you did not fail. Instead of fasting seven days, you may have fasted three or five, but you fasted. Then celebrate it. I don't mean run out and get you a big Oreo cookie, you know, about this big and put ice cream all over. But I mean celebrate in spirituality. Just say, God, thank you for allowing me to fast five days or ten days. Or thank you for encouraging me. The unbeliever isn't out there fasting. I mean, some of them do because they believe that they can chant their way into some sort of victory. But God's looking at his sons and daughters. And when you fast, God's saying, this, this, this person appreciates my grace. This person loves my favor. Does that answer? Yeah, what you should be expecting is breakthrough. And, and unexpected breakthroughs too. Things that you're not prepared for. You know, God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11. God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. That's in the King James. Um, you and I are going to, we're going to do that. So let the Lord lead you into it, but also encouraging you to join in by faith, to try it. Even again, if you, well, Daniel fast is easy, Pastor, and three days is no big deal, but it is a big deal. And if you can't even see yourself doing it for seven days, or you have a big family and it would create chaos, just see if the Lord would help you with three days. You know, it's, it's just you taking a step of faith and obedience, and then God can do great things through it. All right. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention was seasoning, salt and pepper. Uh, he, I don't know if he says anything about pepper on the website, but he says some people don't think you should have salt. Again, for me personally, I can't do anything without salt. Uh, just Himalayan, that's right, and that's what we use, not iodized. Um, and I don't even use it for seasoning as much as I have to have it because I walk in the morning and I just go through a lot of, if I don't have salt in my body, I get cramps really bad. My legs and feet will cramp up. You may have issues like that. You say, well, this is just one area that I can't. And Okay, that, you know, just do a detour around that and keep right on trucking, and God will help you. Um, also, you can use hot pepper sauce. There's all kinds of things that you can do to flavor your food. There are uh, menus, recipes online. You can search other sites. You don't have to limit it to Dr. Axe. You might be saying, but pastor, if, if we're seasoning our food, doesn't that kind of take away? No, you're still staying away from that entire menu of richness. Remember, that's what Daniel said. Listen, my agenda here is that nothing that has to do with with faring sumptuously is going to be a part of my life. I'm just coming to God. I'm going to survive but not thrive. And in this time, I'm going to say to God, I want you to satisfy me. Thank you for allowing me to be full, but I don't want to be satisfied by anything but you. All right, we're out of time tonight. Let's uh, stand together in God's house and um, let's encourage each other, pray for each other as we fast. And let's believe that God is going to show us things, especially in the time in which we live, right? Yesterday and today, I just struggled in prayer. And, and I felt like it was partly because of this unsettledness in our country and all this anxiety and, and uprising and stuff. And it just, I, for the, I hadn't felt it before, but yesterday and today I did. And I don't have answers to all of that, but the Lord does, right? May he bless you and I with a breakthrough. May his favor come upon you to be able to see things that you have not seen heretofore. May he give you vision and the ability to see something that you've been longing to see. May he bless you with an open door. May he bless you with an answer to that which you've been seeking, a direction for your business, an answer in your questioning, and a blessing and prosperity in your finances. And may the Lord help us to be that which is salt in our nation right now. May he bless us here at Central and the church around America to pray through this difficult season, to bring this virus to an end, and to bring peace in our politics. And may the Lord give us an open heaven 
that we can have that feel that Sister Jane mentioned, that we have, we've had a touch from the throne of glory. May his angels surround you tonight and every day until Jesus comes. I bless you in his mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, thanks for being here again, gang. I know it's cold and a dark Wednesday night in the middle of winter, but thank you for taking time to be here. And uh, I'll see you on the weekend if possible.